Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to talk about a specific area in probability. It's called the conditional probability. So first we'll start with some basics and eventually we're going to show you how to calculate and how to utilize Bayes' theorem, which is usually kind of a confusing theorem. And we'll try to make sense out of it by systematically learn the, the skills that we need to know to get to that point where we can actually use Bayes' theorem. So here we have a new kind of concept where we say the probability that B will occur provided A has occurred. That's exactly what that means. So this means the probability that B will occur provided that A has occurred. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a look at this, we can see here we have a sample space and let's assume that the sample space is all the different numbers you can toss when you toss a die. Let then, let A be the event where the result is an odd number, one, three, or five, and B be the event where the number is less than four, therefore one, two, or three. So we then have what we call an intersection between A and B, and those numbers, of course, are one and three. So now we can kind of have a visualization here. A is uh, one, three, and five, the odd numbers. B is anything less than four, one, two, three, and the intersection between A and B is what is common between the two, one and three. So now we can say is that what is the probability that B will occur knowing that A has occurred? But in other words, if A has occurred, that means it either was a one, a three, or a five, and if that is true, what will then be the probability that the number will be B, whether it was one, two, or three? Well, you can clearly see that it's not possible that it's two, but it can be one and three, which means that is where A and B intersect. So understanding that, we come back over here, and we can then say that the probability that B will occur, provided A has occurred, is equal to the probability that both A and B, I shouldn't say both A and B, but the probability that the intersection of A and B has occurred, in other words, the probability that you tossed a one or a three, divided by the probability that A has occurred, and A is, of course, one, three, or five, any one of the odd numbers when you toss a die. So that's the basic definition of the probability that B will occur, provided A has occurred. You can then take that equation, turn it around, and also write it that the probability of the intersection of A and B is therefore equal to the probability that A will occur times the probability that B will occur, provided that A has occurred. So there's different ways of writing that. And again, you can see that when you look at uh, an example like that, you can see where that actually makes sense. See where it makes sense. So let's say that we look at this again and we say the probability that B will occur provided that A has occurred. Well, if A has occurred, the whole sample space is no longer probability. Remember, the whole sample space is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But if we now have the knowledge that A has occurred, that means some of the numbers can no longer be possible. If A has occurred, then only 1, 3, and 5 are possible, 2, 4, and 6 are no longer possible. So therefore, when we calculate the probability, we now have to divide by a smaller sample space. The new sample space is now the probability that A has occurred. But in other words, it's only one half of the numbers available in the sample space are now, are now still possible. And so therefore, the probability will then increase once we know that A has occurred, we now know that we have a higher probability that something in B will occur because of the intersection. And so that's how we then can think about that. And in the next video, we're actually going to take an example of this. We're going to work this out and you can see how the numbers actually make sense. But make sure that you remember this sentence right here, that this is what that means. This is the basic understanding that the probability that one event will occur will depend upon the fact that the other event already has occurred, which typically means that the probability then becomes higher because we're dividing by a lower, what we call sample space. The new sample space is now knowing the knowledge that something already has occurred and so some of those have been excluded from that possibility. Okay, that's the basics of the, what we call conditional probability. And now in the next video, let's do an example so we can go through the numbers and see how that works.